Greetings, viewers, and welcome to what I'm hoping will be an educational video for you. If you clicked on the video link, you're interested in learning about some tips and tricks for Stranded Deep, so let's jump right into it. I wanted to make this video just because when I first started, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I had no idea how anything worked in this game, and I kind of struggled a little bit. Once I finally played it for a little while, figured things out, or watched a couple videos, I kind of got the hang of things, and I feel like some of the stuff that I learned along the way can be used to help you before you start your survival adventure, so let's jump right into it. So first off, when you go ahead and start your game, when you go in here and you go to play and you select a new game, you're presented with these options. This is the only time you have the chance to change any one of these options. So once you pick something, you're kind of stuck with it unless you start over. So one of the things that I wish that I had known about when I started was the option to change the wildlife. I didn't really look at this. I had no idea what it was. Maybe if I had looked at the little tool tips down there, I'd have a better idea. But again, I wasn't really familiar with the game, so I kind of wanted the regular experience. But if let's just say you want to kind of have a relaxed survival experience when you're playing, one of the things that you can do is change this to passive. You just click on it. And if you notice down there, it says wildlife will not attack or defend themselves. This includes things you're going to run into, such as sharks, giant crabs, boars, and snakes. None of them will bother you, even if you run up and or swim up and stab them with your spear. Nothing's going to happen. They're just going to not even care until you kill them. So... That's something that can just kind of make your life a little easier again if you want some of a more relaxed environment or maybe you're just hunting achievements and you, you don't want to be bothered with all the extra stuff. But again, if you want to play it on hard with permadeath on, that's up to you. This is just something to uh, kind of make life a little bit easier. I probably wouldn't recommend remove. It says sharks won't spawn. Killing sharks is nice because you can get some raw hide to turn into leather to make some of the stuff you need. So I would just put it on passive and uh, they're going to leave you alone basically. So next up on the list from this main screen here, you can access this while playing the game. It is going to differ a little bit from PC version to console. If we go down here and we click on cartographer and we zoom out here, this is what the map basically for the world is going to look like. It's got a seed number up here. So if you want to play on the same island as somebody else or you want to give somebody this code because you found something you want to share with them, that's how you do that. The console version, again, is going to look a bit different. It'll be like this. It's just a five by five grid. So as you can see, there's many more islands on the uh, PC version here. Keep in mind, this north arrow is kind of canted a little bit. So you kind of have to do the puppy head tilt, as I call it, to the right to actually orient yourself if you're trying to use your compass. But this comes in handy because there is no in-game map. You, you can't just find one while you're sailing around or craft one. This is the only map that exists of the world that you play in. And it gives you the location of the aircraft carrier here which you need to complete the story and basically beat the game. And then also the location of the three bosses, which again, you'll need to do the same for. This, on the PC version, it will not tell you which boss it is. If I highlight over this, it's just question marks. On the console version, it will specifically tell you if it's the Megalodon, the Eel, or the Squid. Now, you notice this island here has a, circ a red circle around it. And one of the things you can use to your advantage, especially if you're trying to complete the beat the game without using a compass achievement like I'm working on, then this is a handy tip for you because any island that you save it on, so if you craft a shelter or you bring a bedroll with you and you're adventuring and you end up on this island and you save and you exit out to the menu, this red circle is now going to be over here. Your starting island will always be in the center. You're not going to start out on one of the corners of the map, so you'll always be in the middle of whatever random island, whatever random map that you're playing on but I would check this first before you start trying to use that just to verify that it's not this one or this one. So just a little handy tip for you. All right, so this next tip here applies to both console and PC versions. It's probably more of an exploit as I don't know that the developers intended it, but it does work for both systems and it is a huge help. But you can basically get infinite hydration and all it takes is a couple coconuts. In front of me, I have three, but you only need two for this. If you take a coconut that's on the ground and you whack it with your ax and you knock the yellow skin off of it, you're gonna end up with these drinkable coconuts. So I'm gonna pick these three up and I'm gonna drink one. And you'll notice here it says empty drinkable coconut. I'm gonna select a second one because you can drink two consecutively. You then have to wait a little bit of time before you can drink another one or your person will get sick. So we're just gonna stick with two for right now. Now, now that I have two of those empty drinks out of the three, I'm gonna hold C. And it's going to come up with the quick craft menu with this little blue symbol. I'm going to highlight over it and let go of C. It's going to let me place this coconut pile down. Left click. 
I'm gonna hold tab, open that up, and I'm gonna stick this coconut in there. So now I have three drinkable coconuts in that pile. And remember, I drank two of them. So once they're put in a pile, if I go back in here and I just take out two of them, I can drink. I can drink again and put them right back in the pile. And if I wait a little bit and take them out, I can keep doing that over and over and over again just to keep my hydration full. And what that's going to allow me to do is save the water from my water stills to use for my plants. And then I can just drink the coconut juice. All right. So next up, speaking about watering your plants and saving your uh, water stills for that. So rain in this game will fill your water stills as well as your farm plots. So keep that in mind. You can see that little water drop in the middle and how the uh, bar is going around the circle there. So when that circle is completely full, it'll be a big white solid line all the way around. So again, it will fill your water stills without any fibrous material in there at all. So you can always take advantage of that. If your thirst is super low and it's raining and you need to top off, I mean, by all means, obviously feel free to drink out of that. You don't, you don't have to just drink coconut water, but I, t I personally save it just for that. And what I'll do is if, let's say my, uh, my farm plots are full, my water stills full, and I have some water bottles laying around, I will just take those and I will fill those up to capacity, and then I'll allow the rain to go ahead and top back off so that I can come over and I can water my plants and make sure they're full just like that. So when it comes to farming plots in this game, you want to build the best ones possible. I do not recommend under any circumstances building the lowest tier ones, these wood farm plots that are made out of the sticks. They do not hold water very well at all. The plank ones are probably the lowest I would recommend going, and you definitely want to make corrugated. Your crafting skill will dictate which ones you can make, obviously, as well as the amount of resources that you have of planks or scrap. So the higher up you get in your crafting skill, I would definitely recommend making corrugated plots. They hold water much longer. And typically, by the time it rains again, whatever water has run out, it still won't be completely empty, so the rain will just basically top off whatever uh, happens to be missing from so why would you want to make farming plots? Well, for one thing, potatoes. And conveniently enough, it just came ready to pick. So potatoes in this game are used for making fuel. And if you have a, intentions of creating the gyrocopter or putting a motor on your raft to kind of zoom around the ocean a little bit faster than just using a sail, potatoes are the way to go. So the sooner you find one and plant it, the better off you'll be in getting on your way towards having plenty of fuel on hand to... Uh, to get around because the vehicles that use fuel are not very fuel efficient at all. I guess there's not any regulations out here on the island, so they're just spitting gas fumes everywhere, and you're going to want as much fuel and potatoes as possible. So definitely recommend that you get a hold of these things early on. Now, with that, one of the things that I did not know was that you can plant spoiled items. So like this says just potato. After it's been sitting around for a few days, it doesn't matter if it's in your inventory laying on the ground or in a box, it will turn into a spoiled potato. You can still plant a spoiled potato, you just cannot eat it. If you eat it, your person will get sick and it just causes detrimental effects that are not helpful for you. So save the, uh, the potatoes for fuel. Any of the other spoiled meat or plants in the game, definitely don't eat those. So one of the next tips that I have for you is paying attention to your watch. So if you bring up your watch here, it has quite a bit of detailed information on you and your game status and your player status. So first of all, if you look up in the top right hand side, it says UV none. That directly correlates to the bottom one there where it says SPF. And basically that's just how badly sunburned your person is getting while you're uh, standing out in the sun. So going inside of a structure that you've built or being in the shade under some trees will yield it saying none. If you notice in the top left, it's only 9.30 in the morning there. Even though the sun is high in the sky and beaming down on us, well, now there's cloud cover. But anyway, if there was no clouds until 10 o'clock, that uh, UV is going to say none. Once it ticks over to 10 a.m., then the UV will start affecting you. And that SPF meter will start ticking down. Your person's skin will start getting really red. And then uh, eventually they'll start complaining that they need to cool down. So two of the well, a couple of the ways again you can do that is you can go inside your shelter and get out of the sun. You can get in some shade under some trees. I would just check that to make sure it actually says none. Or you can also get in the water. That one doesn't make sense to me because the UV would still be getting you. But what do I know? You see how it says high now. So if you swim around underwater, that'll uh, start to cool you down. 
So let's get out of the sun here and get in the structure. We'll look at the rest of it. So the next thing down on the top there, you see the heart. That's just your health. Below that is the little ham hock, which is your hunger meter. And then below that, the water droplet is your thirst meter. So you, got one, you want to make sure you stay on top of those by eating and drinking again. Stay on top of those coconuts, drinking two at a time. And your hydration should never have a problem. Keep in mind, whenever you go to any island out there, they pretty much all have palm trees. You can grab the coconuts and do the uh, little trick to keep that up. And it's just going to be a matter of keeping uh, food on hand for your hunger meter. When we go to the next page on the watch here, it displays a list of stats. The top one there is your hunting skill. The hunting skill is used to basically determine how much damage you're going to deal when you're shooting your bow or stabbing things with a spear or throwing your spear, shooting a spear gun, whatever. If you're the only way to increase that is by doing those things. So if you're killing seagulls or bats or stabbing fish with a spear or killing boars, sharks, the like, giant crabs, snakes, that all increases it. It doesn't increase very fast, so I would definitely recommend getting out there and uh, killing as much stuff as you can to get that up. So when it comes time for you to fight the bosses, your hunting skill is as high as possible because, again, you're going to want to do as much damage as possible. So below that is your cooking skill. The only way that goes up is by standing near cooking food. So once you throw some stuff on a fire, I wouldn't run too far away from it. If you can just stand around, go AFK for a minute and play on your phone or something, let it finish cooking so that increases. The cooking skill increases the amount of hunger bar you basically you get back from eating cooked food. Especially when you start making some of those big giant shark steaks and you cook those up, the higher your cooking skill is, the more uh, hunger bar you'll replenish. Below that is your harvesting skill. That's used when you harvest things like clay or chop down trees or fibrous plants out of the ground. Or if you're gutting fish and sharks and crabs, that'll increase that. The only thing that I've noticed that that affects, I have not noticed getting extra resources in return. I just noticed that it takes less wax of a clay node or less wax on a tree to get it to fall down. Your physical skill is the little fist icon below that. The way that you increase that is by swimming and also by when you build things such as structure parts for your house, when you're having to smack it with your hammer, that increases your physical skill. And what increasing your physical skill does is it basically gives you more health according to the tool tips here. I've also seen where people have said that it increases the amount of time you can hold your breath. So I have not confirmed that, but either way, getting more health is a lot better. If you're getting attacked by sharks or boars, or if you're fighting the bosses, you, uh, you want as much of that as possible. And the last thing on the bottom there is your crafting skill. And basically, you just increase that by crafting things. So whether you're making stone tools or lashings or workstations, that's going to keep increasing. The higher your crafting skill is, the more crafting recipes you're going to unlock. You may get to a point where you can't make anything else because your crafting skill is too low. Just go back and keep making some more uh, small things that you're going to use later, such again as lashings or bandages or little stone tools. And uh, that'll go up and you'll be able to start crafting the next tier of items. So on the next screen here, we have status effects. There is currently nothing there. It should, you ideally want it to always say plus healthy. And the reason it's not at this point is because my hydration and my hunger are low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in here and grab a ration. So rations increase both thirst and hunger. So when I eat this, it should, you should hear a beep because that status is going to change. And see those bars are both full now. And now when we click over, it's plus healthy. What that means is that you'll regenerate health. So if you took some damage fighting a giant crab or a shark got you or something, and that health bar up there is low, as long as your thirst and hunger are greater than five bars and it says healthy, the, your health will slowly regenerate over time. All right, so next up on the list, my recommendation to you is to build every crafting station that you can. And the reason for that is basically, unless you're going to, you're planning on building multiple bases on multiple islands. Again, I'm coming at you at the angle that this is your very first time ever picking up the game and you're just getting started out on your first island. So again, I recommend making each of the crafting stations. You really only need one of them. Once you build it, they don't break down or deteriorate in any way. So again, like this furnace and this brick station here are here forever. So anytime I want to use them, I just have to have the requisite resources that use that crafting station, be near it, and I can craft them. Now, Keep in mind, one of the things that I didn't know and I just so happened to do was your brick station and your furnace need to be close together. And the reason for that is let's go to our crafting menu here. We're going to go all the way down to where we want to craft brick scrap. So not only does it just require two clay, but it also requires the furnace and the brick station. 
So what you don't want to do is craft your furnace in one location, your brick station on the other side of your island, and then next thing you know, you're trying to make brick scrap to craft something that uses brick scrap, and you can't because these two stations are too far apart. So that's definitely something to keep in mind when it comes time for you to put those two things down. Definitely keep them together. But things like the loom and the tanning rack and the plank station, build those as soon as you can so you have access to them. And again, they'll serve you from the day that you start on your island and craft them to the day that you leave and beat the game. So one important thing to keep in mind is food spoilage. Just like the potatoes and edible plants and things spoil in the game, so does food. However, you notice this giant pile of fish and the crab laying there. If the animals stay in this state, they will not spoil. They will not despawn. They, nothing bad will happen. It's not until you actually skin them and you get the meat. So let's go ahead and skin this crab real quick. So as soon as I do that, that crab's going to kind of disappear and fade out of existence. And I now have this small crab meat in my inventory. If I leave this in my inventory, if I throw it on the ground or don't do anything with it, it will turn into spoiled small crab meat. And it's basically useless. And if it's left laying out over time, it'll just disappear on its own. And you basically can't do anything with it. If you eat it, you'll get sick. So you're going to want to cook your food. Now, there's a couple stages to cooking food. So my number one recommendation is build the smoker as soon as possible. The second that you unlock that crafting recipe and you have the resources to do it, you have to build the fire. You build the fire ring around it, and then you build the smoker. And what the smoker is going to do for you is it's going to allow you to cook food that lasts indefinitely. So this thing can hold five pieces of meat. Once it's attached on there, it'll put all five pieces strung across here. And when you light your fire, it'll go through two stages. It'll go from this regular raw meat to cooked small crab meat and then once you let it sit on there for a little bit longer it'll turn into smoked crab meat once it's smoked it'll last again indefinitely and you can store it away just like i have here i've got this stuff all packed away and ready to go so anytime i need food i can just grab it fill up that hunger bar all right, so the next tip that I have for you is carry a hammer with you. As you start exploring the islands and finding shipwrecks and the little loot boxes and loot containers on the ships, you're going to find these refined hammers. Obviously, you can craft the uh, basic hammer yourself first, but you'll, uh, you'll end up with plenty of these. They do uh, deteriorate, so definitely keep a couple of them in your possession somewhere so that you have access to them. But my recommendation is once you start setting out on your own homemade raft, You've gathered up all the materials that are on your starting island, all your barrels, buoys, or tires, and you've got somewhat of a raft created, and you start checking out the other locations. If you bring a hammer with you and you find some more of those materials, you can expand your raft while you're on the go because it's almost impossible. It's not 100% impossible, but it's very difficult to transport tires and barrels on a raft and get them home to your island for the purpose of attaching them to your raft. So it's much easier if you just take a hammer with you to begin with. More than likely, there will be palm saplings on the island you can break down for fibrous materials, which you can turn into lashings and then combine it with those to uh, put the section on your raft. So the last tip that I have for you is just kind of item organization, basically. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it, but items do not despawn. So as you can see, this huge mess that I have laying on the ground in front of me, Maybe a uh, OCD nightmare to some of you. It is to me, but if I keep moving and uh, exploring, I don't notice it as much, so it's fine. But when you drop stuff on the ground, it won't despawn. It is supposed to stay there forever. So theoretically, from day one to day a thousand, all this stuff should sit there and not disappear. It doesn't blow away in the wind. It doesn't wash away in the tide. Nothing like that. It doesn't rot or deteriorate. The only thing that'll happen to is the food, like I mentioned, spoiling. But other than that, you can just put stuff anywhere you want. You can make piles. Or you can just drop it right on the beach and keep your uh, your survival adventure going. All right, so that was just a few quick tips and tricks that I really wish I had known when I first started to make my survival adventure a little bit uh, easier and less having to run around and figure things out for myself. So hopefully you guys and girls found this information useful. If anybody out there thinks that there's something I may have missed or somebody might find useful that... Uh, they've learned on their own, go ahead and put it in the comments down below so we can kind of help everybody else out and make their lives slightly easier when playing this game. 
As always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Always open to constructive criticism or feedback. If there's anything I can do to make my videos better for you, please feel free to let me know. So with that, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.